Hello beautiful, hey Nikki here from Crazy Simple Truth and today I'm going to get out my interleave journaling Bible, the book of Proverbs, haven't gotten that out in a long time. So if you watch the very end of this video you will see um, me coloring this with my Prismacolored pencils. It's not too exciting, but it was fun. And so if you stay to the end, you can see a little clip of that. But today we are going to go through chapter nine of Proverbs and I'm going to do some critical thinking skills with you. So the Bible study method that I teach, in case you don't know this about me, is inductive Bible study. I believe that is the very best Bible study method that there is. The inductive Bible study is observation, interpretation, and application. And so even though I call it unfolding truth, and I call I have some creative letter C names for my steps, it is inductive Bible study. So today we're going to do the observation step. See my little unfolding truth. This is what I call it. But this part I call create the scene. Now creating the scene just means that you're looking at what's happening and you're taking notes on it, interacting in it with it in some way, okay? So I'm a hands-on visual learner. It's very important for me to be able to work through it and, and, and do different things with it so that I remember what I learned. And so I'm going to do that with you today. We might not necessarily get creative, but we're going to observe the facts and create the scene. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find God. This is always the most important thing. And actually, actually, the most important thing is to always say a prayer before you dig into the word of God. So let's just do that. Bow your head really quickly. Lord God, we come before you today, Lord, and we just want to be in your word, Father. We want to be in your presence, and so we just pray that you would teach us about you, Lord. We want to know about you. We don't want the Bible to be about us, Lord, but about you. We love you so much, and we pray that you will reveal yourself to us in the word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so that's the very first thing. The next thing is finding God. And so I got these um, new brush liner mild liners that I'm really loving. I have always used mild liners and I have lots of other kinds of highlighters, but I really love these brush pens. They're really fun. So I'm going to highlight with this gold today. This tends to be the color that I always use for God. So that's what I'm going to use. We're going to read through this and we are going to find God. So wisdom has built her house. She has carved her seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maid servants. She calls out from the heights of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. She says to him who lacks judgment, come eat my bread and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your folly behind and I will walk in the way of understanding. He who corrects a mocker brings shame on himself. He who rebukes a wicked man taints himself. Do not rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Instruct a wise man and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man and he will increase in his learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom, your days will be multiplied and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, you are wise to your own advantage. So I'm just going to do this section. In this interleave journaling Bible, it is divided by sections and you will recognize them with this. This is a new section. A section heading gives you the main topic. Okay, so our main topic is the way of wisdom and God wasn't mentioned very much, but he was still mentioned. And just know if he's not mentioned in the section that you are studying, he's still there, I assure you. Okay, so the word that I saw the most repeated was wisdom and wise. And so we're going to find a color that we can mark up or observe what's going on with wisdom. So I'm just going to use this bright pink here. And I'm going to actually color code this first and then we're going to look at wisdom has built her so this is referring to wisdom she has carved out her she and then it has she set her table she has sent out her maid servants 
Verse 3, she calls out from the heights of the city. Um, verse 4 says, she says, and this is her talking. So I'm actually going to, I want you to pay attention to punctuation, okay? So what has happened here is whoever it is that's writing this proverb, all right, um, they are personifying wisdom. They are pretending or portraying wisdom as a female. Okay, so that's why there are these pronouns, her and she. So now that she's talking, wisdom is talking, I'm just going to mark these little quotes here because I want to know that this is where wisdom is talking. Okay, then it goes on. It kind of changes the subject only a little bit because wisdom was talking about building her house and now we're talking about he who corrects a mocker, he who rebukes a wicked man. So it kind of changed the topic on us a little bit. And I don't think we're going to see wisdom specifically mentioned. However, we do have wiser. So I'll use this same color. And then let's just check here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge, understanding. Verse 11 says, for through wisdom... Your days will be multiplied. Verse 12. If you are wise, you are wise to your own advantage. Now, there's some other words here because you're using your critical thinking or critical observation skills. You're looking at what it says. You're not trying to figure out what it means. You're looking at what it says. So because you are doing that, you're going to notice that there's some other words. Oh, here's the word wise. There's some other words that are very similar to the word wisdom, like increase in learning. So I'm actually going to highlight learning. And then over here, we've got knowledge and understanding. And those are all a similar topic as wisdom. So it's okay to go in and notice that. Now, you don't have to highlight these words. I'm just showing you that you can if you are a visual learner. So what we've got here is this female wisdom, right? So I'm just going to get this pink color. There is no right or wrong way to take notes when you're studying the Bible. We are observing the facts. We're creating the scene. So we've got wisdom. And what do we know about wisdom? We know that she's female. I'm just going to put personified. That means that even though wisdom can't be a person, the author made her into a person to help make the point of what he wants you to learn um, more, uh, what do I want to say, uh, easier for you to understand, okay? So she built her house, she carved out seven pillars, she prepared her meat and mixed her wine, she set her table, she sent on her maidservants, she calls out, um, and then what we've got here is things that don't really matter, Okay, how do I know that? Well, because do we need to take notes that wisdom built her house? No, the author is just trying to make a point. So he's saying that she did all of these things. She prepared, right? And then she called out. Whoever is simple. Oop, I found some more quotations here. And look at there's an exclamation mark. Exclamation marks are important to pay attention to also because she is trying to make a point. So she prepared all of these things, and then she says, Come eat my bread and drink the wine I've mixed. Leave your folly behind, and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. Now look, I read it again, and look at what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the word understanding. And I also have up here, lacks judgment. If you're not wise, you lack judgment. So let's do this. We're not concerned about what she's doing here, although she's being prepared. We could say that. Prepared. And then she says, come eat and drink. Leave your folly behind. So she says, leave folly behind. And then she says, you will live. So what happens if you leave folly behind? You will live. And then she says, walk in the way of understanding. Walk in understanding. Now, does she tell us what will happen if we walk in understanding? Let's see. He who corrects a mocker brings shame on himself. Now, I would not 
necessarily go in and color code he, this person that she's talking about, but I'm going to for this video because I want you to visually see what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna use this periwinkle blue here and we're gonna do he. He who correct, woo, that's dark. Well, it's okay, you guys can see it. He who corrects a mocker brings shame on himself. He who rebukes a, a wicked man taints himself. Do not rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Instruct a wise man. Okay, so we've got the word wise again and see how I didn't see that at first. You're reading through this over and over and over again and you are getting an idea of what it says. You're soaking it in, okay? So we've got this new character here. We've got the one who corrects a mocker and rebukes a wicked man. Then we've got do not rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. So we've got this new kind of character, I guess you could say. Now remember, I wouldn't normally color code, mark up, or highlight all of this, but I want you to visually learn how to notice this. So we've got a mocker, all right? Then we've got a mocker again. And then he will hate you. Well, who's he? He is the mocker, verse 8. He will hate you. Okay, so now we've got this mocker. What do we know about this mocker? Okay, let's, let's get a purple pen since I kind of did that in purple just for fun. We've got this mocker. What do we know about him that seems important? You only have to write down what seems important. He who corrects a mocker brings shame on himself. He who rebukes a wicked man taints himself. So actually we don't know a lot about the mocker. This is saying that you shouldn't bother with mockers. So how do we want to do this? Do not rebuke a mocker. So let's say he, he, and I'm just going to put in parentheses, you, you and I, he who corrects a mocker brings shame on himself. He, I'm going to say should not bother, I guess is what I could say, with mockers. or wickedness, wicked men, I'll say, since it says a wicked man. And what's the consequence of that? Um, you taint yourself, you bring shame on yourself. So if you bother with mockers, you bring shame. I'm just observing what it says. If you bother with wicked men, you taint yourself. So God is saying here through this author, he's saying to us, don't bother with them. What does he want us to do instead? He says, do not rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. So this mocker, if rebuked, will hate you. Okay. Um, a wise man. So now we've got this new character, right? This wise man. So let's get a new color. Remember, I wouldn't normally do all of these colors, but I'm trying to show you exactly what it says. A wise man, so a wise man, and he, the wise man, will love you. Instruct a wise man, and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in his learning. So I'm going to include the wise man and the righteous man as the same man, okay? Because that's okay, and I can. So we will go ahead and write the wise man here. Wise man, and what are we going to say about him? Um, rebuke. Uh, okay, he loves those who rebuke him. Who rebuke him. That's what this says here. He loves those who rebuke him. Um, he will be wiser. Um, let's see, what does it say? Verse 9. Instruct a wise man and he will be wiser still. Um, loves instruction, I'm just going to say. Loves instruction. Teach a righteous man, he will increase in learning. I'm just going to include righteous. Righteous man increases learning. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm just showing you how to observe what you see. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we're not going to come to that yet. 
This is actually addressed to a person, okay? So let's hold on. What do we have here? We know that wisdom is prepared. Wisdom is going to leave folly behind and walk in understanding. We do not want to be like a mocker. We do not want to mess with mockers. We want to be this wise man. So I'm actually going to take this pink here just because and match it up with this. He loves... He loves being rebooked, he loves instruction, and he increases in learning. So this is a good thing. So then let's go on and see what he says about this. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So I'm just going to start fresh here because this is almost like a new topic, although it's not, and I'll show you in a, in a bit. I'm just going to have to use my blue pen here. Okay, fear Lord, fear the Lord. And that's going to get you beginning of wisdom. So we've got this wisdom again. It says, and knowledge. So I'm going to mark this one out too. Knowledge of the Holy One. So fear the Lord, knowledge of the Holy One, which is God, Holy One. I'm writing messy, I, I'm sorry, is understanding. So fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Actually, this is two separate topics. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So what does this tell us? If we want wisdom and we want to understand things, we have to fear the Lord. We have to have knowledge of the Holy One. We have to love when we're rebuked. We have to love instruction and we have to know that it's it, we're going to increase in learning, right? We don't want to be a mocker. We don't want to um, be tainted. We don't want to have shame. So we stay away from those kind of people. That is what the author here is saying. So we want to be this wise man. We want to have this wisdom. So how do we get this wisdom? We fear the Lord. We get knowledge of the Lord. And then it says, for through wisdom. Now notice this little word here. This is a little secret word for. This basically is telling you this is the reason. So this is the important verse here. This is the reason. Because through wisdom, your days will be multiplied. So let's go back over here. This wise man. Through wisdom, our days will be multiplied. I hate how messy I write when I'm filming our days will be multiplied and what else does it say our years will be added to our life years added I'm just gonna say and what else about this wise man if you are wise you are wise to your own advantage but if you scoff you alone will bear the consequences so it's it's it it's to your advantage be wise it's your advantage. It's to your advantage. So we want to be wise. We want to accept instruction and be okay with being rebuked. We want to have fear of the Lord. This is a reverential fear. This is stand in awe of what he does in your life. And we want to have knowledge of the Holy One. How do we get knowledge? How do we fear the Lord? We read his word. And this is why I love these interleaved journaling Bibles because there's so much space to just be messy. And that's okay. That's what it's for. That is what it's for. So now we know the reason why we want to fear the Lord and have knowledge of the Holy One is to get this wisdom, this understanding. We want to live a long life, right? We want to live a long life pleasing the Lord. And so this was super, super helpful. I love looking through the Bible and thinking critically. Now, what I would do for the next step, if I was going to, is I would find words that I was going to define. Words or even phrases like lax judgment. That's a phrase because it's more than one word. If I were studying this and I was trying to keep it simple, I would not use all of these colors. I would find God. I would find words that I want to define because they're interesting or because I think they're important. And I would find a verse that I wanted to unfold or verse map and dig deeper into. For me, it would be verse 10. This verse was incredible. 
incredible. Love this verse, the fear of the Lord. So I'm going to get out this gold color for God. I'm going to box around this. This is the verse that I would unfold. You could do that right in this page. I'm not going to be doing it today. You could go to my website and find this um, double page worksheet. You could also buy the verse mapping or unfolding truth workbook that's exclusively on Amazon. You can also buy the digital PDF version of the workbook, which gives you instructions on how to do this. So that is what I would do if I were you. Let me show you, if I was gonna look up words, let me just show you what I would do. I would have my three colors, okay? So I'm gonna have to pick three different colors because I've already marked this all up. Let's pretend like this is not marked up, okay? Let's pretend like this is not marked up. So here's my three colors. I've got God, I've got words that stand out to me, whether they're important or interesting, and I've got a verse that stands out to me. I try to find a verse in every section. Remember, a section has a heading. This is a section, this is a section, okay? So, we've already highlighted God. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna find our words that I would define. I would most definitely define wisdom. So pretend like none of this was marked up, okay? I would most definitely define wisdom. I would look at the phrase lacks judgment. I think that's interesting to me. Leave your folly behind and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. So I actually, now that I'm looking at it, I'm seeing that I should have wrote that down here. Um, leave folly, walk in understanding. So there's actually several things that this person who we want to be with wisdom does. And so we want to know those things. All right, back to the words. Leave your folly behind. So let's see what folly is. I would look that up. The word rebuke is there a few times, but doesn't really interest me instruct. I love that instruct because wisdom comes from instruction too. It comes from instruction. And then I've already told you this is the verse I would choose. So if I were highlighting and I was using my three color code system, I would just go ahead and highlight this whole verse. So pretend like wisdom isn't highlighted. I would highlight that whole verse in my verse color. This is my God color. This is my verse color. This is my word color. Now, is there a word in the rest of this section that I would define? Fear of the Lord is beginning wisdom. I think I would want to look at fear. And then, let's see, did I do wisdom? I did wisdom. I'd be curious if this wise was the same word or root word um, or not. So then that is what I would do next. I would find my study Bible and I would look up the word wisdom in the back. Um, some of these things aren't going to be there. You will need Bible Hub for that or Blue Letter Bible. There are plenty of videos on my channel where I teach you how to define the words. But I'm going to leave this this here. I'm not going to do anything else with it because I know you can do it. You're going to go in, define the words that are interesting or seem important to you. Choose one verse and dig deeper into it. And these steps to unfolding truth are on my website. So you are beautiful. God loves you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.